Hi everybody and welcome back to the Creative Kindergarten YouTube channel. My name is Amanda and I'm an early childhood educator and today I'm going to be showing you how to add check boxes into Google Sheets so that you can make tracking forms really easily within um, your Google product, uh, within your Google Drive. So I shared this over on my YouTube channel and a lot of people were really excited about it and were asking me how I did it. So I thought I would create this little quick tutorial to show you how you can quickly and easily make your own tracking sheets. These are great for tracking skills, for keeping track of who's brought back in, field trip forms, things like that. Things that I usually put on sticky notes and then I try to keep track of them throughout my classroom and then I have sticky notes everywhere. So this is just a much easier way to keep track of things in your classroom. What I really love about Google products like this is that I can, I can access my Google uh, Sheets from anywhere, right? So if I'm on my laptop, I can be having them open on my laptop. But if I'm using my phone, I can have them on my phone. I can have them up on an iPad. Anywhere that you can access your Google Drive, you can use your tracking form. So that's what I really like about this. I'm not forgetting sticky notes or um, trying to find sticky notes. Or if it's in like something like uh, Microsoft Word, it's only on that device that you have that file saved on. So this is just a much easier way. I did little quick um, one over here just to kind of give you an example, but I'm going to walk you through exactly how to create one on your own right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go to my Google Drive and I'm going to create a new Google Sheet. It's going to open a brand new one. Uh, for this one, I'm just going to do an example of tracking alphabet knowledge. So um, alphabet knowledge when at the beginning of the year where you want to know who knows um, which uh, uppercase letters or which letters, you would just create a simple alphabet tracking form so that you can um, tell maybe this is they know the letter sounds, whatever it might be. So I know that there's 26 letters of the alphabet, but I'm going to need an extra column for um, names as well. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to highlight all this and I'm going to create the title that I do like at the top here where it says skill tracking. I'm going to create that title for alphabet knowledge. One of the simple ways to highlight a whole slew of columns instead of having to um, scroll to the end and go to the end. What you can do is control shift and then click the right arrow and it'll highlight everything for you instead of having to manually go through them one by one. I actually am going to need to add an extra row because I'm going to need that name row. So I'm just going to insert a row and so that I have that extra one um, ready to go. There it is. Oh, an extra column insert a column. I didn't need an extra row. I need an extra column. So now I'm going to highlight them all again. So this time I need to go back. So I'm going to hold control shift and then the left arrow. And then it's going to, um, actually I had an extra row. Okay. Let's try that again. There we go. And now I want to have this whole first top row as one merged, um, row so that I can have my title up at the top nice and clear. So all you have to do is select the, the rows that you want to merge and you come over to this. Um, this little part over here where it says merge cells and you're just going to merge all. And then it just makes it into one big row so that you can have it um, centered. And then I always love to change the fonts and play around a little bit with the formatting so that I know that it looks nice. Um, that's just my preference. You definitely do not have to do this part where you're messing around with like fonts and making it look nicer. But that's just the way I like to do it because I do like to have um, it look nice for me because if I'm going to be using it, I just like having it formatted really nicely. So I just made the background black with some white print so it really pops. Next, you're going to have to make the title names for all of your rows, um, all of your columns. I mean, I keep calling them um, rows. So the first one is going to be names, right? You're going to want your students' names. And then you're going to need to make a column for each letter of the alphabet so that you can track it. So now I've got the um, title row for everything here. Again, I'm going to highlight everything. And because I like to play around with the fonts, I'm going to make them bold and I'm going to center them. So now we have our title row done. We also need to put our students' names now down the left-hand side so we can keep track of them. So you can write in all your students' names, 
but the really nice thing about doing it this um doing it within google forms is that if you already have one made so you only have to do it once and then the next time you go and do it you can just copy and paste the names from a different google um sheet and just put them directly in here. Or if you've typed them somewhere else, you can just put them directly in here. It keeps the formatting from your previous one. So all you have to do is like highlight the ones that you want, go to format and clear the formatting and it'll put them all the same. So now we've got all of our students. And again, I'm going to change the font and the layout just because I like to have them all looking the same. I'll probably make the students' name bigger. There we go, and then bold it. And now we are ready to start formatting in and adding in those checkboxes. So we don't need our columns to be this wide. It's really not necessary. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight all of the columns. And this is always the tricky part. I always forget exactly how to do this. And then you're gonna come over here and then it says resize columns A to, it's going to be AA, it's just cut off there. So you want to enter the width in pixels or fit to data. So it'll make it really skinny and fit to the data. If you do that, it'll like really like push it right into the sides. And I think that's going to be maybe too small for the formatting. So I'm going to try 25 and see what that looks like. And I think that looks pretty good. That actually looks like a good size for um, my thing. Oh, I reformatted this one to be the same size that's way too small so i'm going to resize this column and maybe put that one back up to 100 was that too big perfect so now we have all of our students um names everything ready to go there i might make these a bit bigger there we go and we are ready to start formatting a little bit more here. So we have a whole bunch of extra rows now. So all of these are empty. They take up a lot of space. I just don't like having them there. We can take those off in an easy way. There's a thousand rows usually on each Google Sheet. We don't need a thousand rows. So what I'm gonna do is Control, Shift, and then press the Down button. And you're gonna see it's gonna highlight all the way down to those 1,000. And then I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna say Delete Rows 28 to 1,000. We don't need those. But if you do get an extra student and you want to add in an extra student, you would just go add one and then you would have room to put that extra student that you just got. But we're going to work with 25 students for now. So we have our basic format ready to go. We want to add in our checkboxes. So let's just highlight all the cells that are going to need checkboxes and click insert checkbox easy as that and now they're all there. They always come up in kind of like a grayish color. You can keep it gray if you want. Um, I'm going to put them to black. For, it says checked off as black, but they're never that color. I don't know why. But now we have all of our checkboxes added in to our Google Sheet, and it just was really easy to do and simple. But now if you want to go to student 14 and check off that they've done the letters, uh, they know the letter Z, well, it's really hard to keep track of it. So what you can do is now format it to have alternating colors between um, the rows so that you can easily see um, your students, uh, the easily see um, where the checkboxes are and who they belong to. So there's one way you can do that where you go to format and then alternating colors that's where it is for some reason I always lose that one and then it'll do it like for you so if you just click this one whichever color I just like the pink one it'll automatically do the formatting for you and you can do that and then they, now you'll know that student five you can check off the W no problem you know it belongs to them you can do it that way for here for my rainbow one I kind of like it with the two I don't know why I just like it I can feel like I can see it better when it's done too so I'm going to undo the um formatting that we just did and then I'm going to come back here and what I what you can do is just highlight two rows at a time and then color it in so I went the color of the rainbow and then I skip one and I leave that one white and then I come back and then I fill it in orange and then skip one fill it in yellow so I did too many and then you just keep going until you do all the colors of the rainbow So that's just a really easy way to make yourself a checklist without having to, um, you know, 
go through a lot of trouble. I format it the way I like, but now that you've done it this way, let's say you have alphabet knowledge, but you also want to do um, lowercase letter knowledge. All you have to do is duplicate this and it'll make a copy of the exact same sheet you just made, but you can go lowercase knowledge. And now you've got that one ready to go. You didn't have to duplicate anything. And then I would just change them down here. So you actually know lowercase. Um, maybe this one is letter sounds. And then you have another one that you duplicate this again. And that one's for uppercase. And so you have all of your letter knowledge um, Google Forms into one, and then you can create a different Google Sheet that maybe has um, some other skills, like they know, uh, I don't know, what other literacy skills. They have letter formations, or if they have um, what, their, what their reading level, you can have the reading levels along the top and then check off where they are for their reading levels. So really, the, oper like the, um, I can't type and talk at the same time. That's my thing. So really the opportunities to have all of your data collection in one space is so easy because now all you have to do is just duplicate the ones that you want. You can easily reformat um, the size of the columns if you want to make them bigger so that their skill tracking are bigger like these. You can uh, duplicate something like you can have multiple different ones one for math one for literacy one for science skills or you can have one for um, keeping track of uh, forms that come back or if students are doing all about me bags and you want to keep track of who's brought back in they're all about me bags you can have that all into one so really you can um, keep adding to the same sheet so let's say um, you were doing one for field trip forms or something like that and you have an extra field trip, just add an extra column. All you have to do is come over here and say, insert one right, and it inserts for you another column. And then you can just add, oh, this one is for, I don't know, um, field trip forms. So you were going to write field trip two or zoo trip or whatever it is, you can just easily add an extra column for those times that you need it. So this is just a really easy way to um, get your Google, um, get your forms all into one place, keep your data tracking and really just have everything filled in for you and ready to go and you can keep track of it everywhere. So I really hope that that was helpful for you. And if you have any questions, make sure you leave them down in the comments down below. I'm always happy to answer the questions for you. If this is something that you're interested in, let me know in the comments. Is there anything else that you'd love to know how to do with Google products? Is there something that you've seen and you'd really love a tutorial with how to do it? Make sure you leave me that in the comments down below. If you want more tech tips for teachers, make sure you're following me over on Instagram and I'll leave all of um, my links for my social media in the description box for you so that you can get in contact with me. So thank you so much for watching. Make sure you stay subscribed to keep track of any new videos that I make like this and hit the like button if you did like this video. So I will see you all next time. Thanks.